What's up everybody? So I wanted to uh, talk to you about uh, proper sterile procedures. Um, it's one of the most important things in mycology. Um, without it, you're gonna run into a lot of contaminants. Um, you gotta make sure that everything is sanitized around you uh, by using alcohol, using um, gloves. So uh, this is what I, I use. First thing you wanna do is, um, very importantly, the spores is they're sticky. The the back the the the, the mold spores they are everywhere around us, no matter where you go, um, and they stick to you. You don't notice they're micro they're billions and they're they're microscopic. Um, so when you if you don't you know wash do the sanitization proper properly, um, and you go to inoculate, especially during inoculation, those spores will actually drop into your substrate, and then it, it, you're going to get it's going to overcome the mycelium and you're going to get contaminants whether it's uh, purple red yellow green um, any black any any color other than white is a contaminant and you want to if that happens you want to take your jars toss them outside um, away from your house because if you open that jar inside those spores are going to re get released into the air and they're going to start sticking around your your, your grow your grow area whether it's your kitchen whether it's 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 a clot. A anywhere you, you go where you're growing, it's going to get ruined. And you're not going to be able to get rid of it. It's very, very resilient. Um, so take it outside and toss them in the garbage. I put mine in a Ziploc and um, close it, toss it. I, have, I don't want nothing, um, I don't want not one getting out. And I buy new jars. They're not too expensive. It's 10 bucks for 12. But if you do decide you want, you need to keep the jars and you, you have to, take the whole thing jar with the substrate and the and the um and, and all the mold in it put it in boiling water for at least 45 minutes to an hour boil it very well then take it outside dump out the substrate take the jar back and reboil the jar empty again for the same remain for the same amount of time um that's gonna stand, that's gonna kill everything and i would wash it too you know what i mean um then you can reuse them if you de if you die but i'm telling you if you do if you toss them outside and you still got some some live spores in there and they stick to you, you're not going to get out of it. So make sure you if that happens, just if you, if you can toss them outside. Um, so first thing you want to do before, especially before inoculation or grain to grain transfers, or even working with any type of of, of spore print, take a shower, uh, wash your hair, hot water. Um, brush your teeth. Use mouthwash because it's, it's, it's all the bacteria in your mouth. It's 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 gonna it's gonna breathe it out. Um, so take a shower, wash your wa um, uh, wash, brush your teeth, rinse your mouth, and then you want to put on some clean cotton clothes, 100% um, cotton. If you have scrubs, medical scrubs, those are even better because um, you know, they, they, they use them in hospitals, and you know how sanitized hospitals have to be because of, people are like, sick. So um, but if you don't have them, that's fine. You just wear clean clothes. Then what I do is um, I'll use a one of these coveralls. It's made of Tyvek, and you can you get them at the paint paint section at any um, hardware store like Home Depot. Um, and it's it's made of a certain material where it, it, it's it's going to cover everything, and you're not going to have to worry about problems. Um, I get this. And um, I'll, after I'll, I'll wash my I'll wash my hands and everything, then I'll I'll, I'll put this on. Then um, these are Tyvek arm sleeves. They just go around your arms. That way, you know your your skin's not exposed. Your skin is you always you're gonna have something on your skin that's you don't want it exposed. Um, you put the put the sleeves on. Um, use a, a mask. Use a medical mask, not a dust mask, because a dust mask is not gonna be as effective because uh, dust spores dust is much thicker than um, the microscopic um, mold spores. So you, it's recommended to use some type of medical mask because that's the best thing. Um, use the mask. I use hair ne uh, hair net. That way you just, just in case something's in your hair. And I, trust me, I, I, I'm doing this for a reason because when I didn't do this, I ran into a lot of contaminants. It wasn't until I started doing this where that problem started disappearing um, I I do that and then I got the gloves very important 
Um, use gloves that are non-powder, don't have powder on them. So just as long as that's because powder is it's, it's, it's going to cause problems because of because uh, uh, it rubs off. So um, I get these at the at a hospital because my wife works at a hospital, so I she gets them for me. Um, so I have a bunch of them, but you could buy any you could buy gloves at you know any 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 grocery store, any you know uh, Walmart, I mean um, Walgreens stuff like that. They have it. Um, once you do that, um, and you have everything on covered. You want to begin to um, you want to uh, get some alcohol, and I'll keep alcohol in um, in a bottle, in a spray bottle, and I'll spray the whole area that I'm working with, my whole my work area. Get spray, wipe it down, spray your gloves, or even use hand sanitizer uh, to wipe all of your gloves in between your fingers, and just to make sure there's nothing there, everything's dead, everything's killed. Um, you, I would use oust any type of air sanitizer just to make sure there's nothing floating around and then um, you could proceed with the beginning of the inoculation process um, during inoculation if you've seen some of my video of the oven method um, you got to flame sterilize the, the, the needle and my last video I wasn't wearing any of that that was beginning I was just beginning when I was doing those videos uh, once I started um, my knowledge started building up I started making videos and um, that changed. That was the process of change. This is a part of the change. I started using, doing everything head to toe, covering, and it works. I had no experience, no, no as much of, of, of contaminants as I did when I began, because um, I, I, I did things differently, and it works. So I stick to it. So um, you want to, you want, you wanted to, um, when you're inoculating. You want it to, uh, the oven method is a, is a it's a frowned upon, but it works for me. Normally, you're supposed to be, have a, a flow hood. Flow hoods are three thousand dollars. You're not going to be able to buy a flow hood unless you're a, a real mycologist. And we're not real mycologists. We're hobbyists. That's our classification. Until you're until you go to school and you get a lab, you're in a lab. You have thirty thousand dollars invested in all the equipment. That's the beginning of being a mycologist. But right now, we're hobbyists, which is just cool. It's just as cool. Um, so, if you see, I was doing the oven method. That's the, that's a part of the uh, of the inoculation. Now, if you're doing grain to grain transfers and you're getting a grain of, of white uh, rye berries that I showed you on the other video on up, up on my um, shelf on my, uh, my cupboards, um, you're gonna want to do a steel air box. And if you saw my steel 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 air box or glove box setup, that's uh, no airflow is the best because spores flow on cur air current and if there's no air current there's, they're not going anywhere so you, you sanitize it inside of the, of the box and then you're not going to get contaminants I only use the steel air box when I do grain to grain because I, 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 every other time I, I, I lose jars I've lost eight jars strains twice until I I stick to the glove box, but I don't do the glove box when it comes to the inoculation because it's it's compacted in there, and you got a needle, and I poke the hell out of my finger, and it's still bleeding, and, it's, and you can't stop because you're in the middle of, of inoculation. And if you stop, you just might as well just stop all the way because um, you're going to introduce contaminants. Very important, very important. Um, that's the first part of um, beginning of of the whole mycology game is. Um, preparing yourself for the sterile procedures and um, so make sure you get your gloves sanitize them with the alcohol spray everything and um, you should be fine um, you'll, you'll notice there's a little bit of a difference if you don't have all the stuff like the hair net stuff like that I recommend at least wearing a mask that's probably the most and gloves those are the two most important things because um, the mask is gonna keep your your your, your breath Whatever the crap is in your in your mouth, that's gonna keep it out. Um, I've done it without um, the hairnet. I just started using the hairnet because um, I got contaminates, and I was using that. So once I did the hairnet, it, it it lowered it down to pretty much a percentage, like a, a single percentage. So um, I stick to it. So I recommend it. And um, like I said, I'll teach everything I say and I teach. Uh, it's it's I, I it works for me, and it's pretty much the proper way of doing it if it doesn't work for you it's not always going to work either you can do the steel steel air box 
or do the oven method. Either one. The, the oven method is, is something that I, when I began um, my, my hobby, um, I learned that way. And um, I changed and I did the still air box and I went back to the oven because it worked. So that's the, that's the, um, the procedure for proper you know, sanitation. That's very important. And um, you have any questions or anything like that? You have any concerns? Feel free to let me know. You know, write write a comment, and I'll I'm really good about responding right away. I'm every day. I'm looking at it. You know, um, if you need my email address, if you want to, you know, I'll I'll give you my email address. I've done it before, and you can email me, and it's faster. You know, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm here to help. Um, I experienced the I experienced the downfalls and the mistakes, so you guys don't experience them. Um, and if you do experience them my way, and I'll, I'll ask you what you're doing, and we'll go through the whole process. And if you're doing exactly what I'm doing, then you know it's there's something you have to change. It's something just minor that you might have to change. Um, whether it's you know um, sanitizing your arms, or your, or maybe um, uh, putting them into a washing machine. You're closed into a washing machine right away, and putting the dryer on high so it kills you know that heat. Um, there's different things you need to do. And um, that is the most important part, is that is sanitization. Because without it, you're going to get mold. No matter what, you're going to get contaminants. That's a part of mycologists. Even the even the the main mycologists, they tell you when you when you read their stuff. That's all a part. Of it. You're going to experience it no matter what. I ex first contaminant I experienced. You can see that it was the yellow mycelium, um, yellow mold that was uh, on the substrate jar. The mycelium was overcoming the yellow mold um, I, I tossed it I didn't, didn't have to and you got you can't think yellow mold and uh, metal bites I think the metal bites that's different that's like um, it's, it's 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 the mycelium is being hurt it, and so it releases um, its chemical so um, because it's either too hot or um, it's, you know, you shaked it or something like that something happened where it's, it's, it's it affected the mycelium but when you start getting pink purple mold I've had that if you see my purple mold video that purple mold was in one jar and it was just small it jumped from one jar to another jar and went in another jar and I read about it it'll go right through the filters um, filter discs and it's hard that only that will go through it you can't confuse that with red lipstick mold because red lipstick mold it's it's it's, it's almost the same but it's the, the name and the whole thing is it's different so if you experience that go to the, my videos with the, the mold and so you'll see and so you know what's up you know what to look for anything any color other than white you're gonna want to um, toss out monitor your jars every day churn them um, especially with the PF uh, cakes don't shake them because that that layer of vermiculite that filter will um, will kind of will start um, dropping and it'll cause gaps and then one little spore will get between those gaps onto the substrate and then you're done so that's the importance of that layer and I, I suggest using sport pore tape it's the medical pore tape put on over the holes it's still able to breathe um, you're not suffocating the mycelium that's very important because nothing's gonna go nothing it's gonna be harder for the uh, mold to get into the into the substrate um, don't leave the foil on the jars people said leave the foil on the jars put four holes don't put five because if you put five it's gonna dry out your substrate too faster and it's, it's, it's I've, I've had that I've did it and I, I don't do it no more uh, four holes uh, three or four um, not too big not too small because you don't want to suffocate it and you don't want it drying out that's what Midwest a Midwest grow kit and I bought their ultimate kit for a hundred dollars because I was just started and I wanted to do something I wanted something to that would be successful at hell no it was I didn't even use it their substrate had holes they use nails and I brought it to their attention why do you guys using nails you guys are a company you guys should be using dr drills oh that was they said oh that was during uh, the holidays and they ran out of whatever drill so they they used that way and I was like well my luck because just substrate was very dry and um, nothing grew I ended up 12 jars zero growth I ended up tossing out the substrate keeping the jars and um, and it was frustrating their 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 whole way their, 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 their fruiting chamber their inoculation I mean sorry their um, 
colonizing chamber where you use two totes, one filled with water a little uh, halfway and then put another tote on top of it with a aquarium heater. That's how they teach you. And I, I, it never worked for me. I didn't like it because it would slide the jars around, bump into each other, cause problems. I don't buy um, uh, jars with cakes, cake jars from any vendors because when they're shipping them to you, they move around and that's gonna cause that filter to gap, to drop and have gaps. So make your own um, substrate. It's not hard and it's cheaper. You get, you're, cost, you're talking a fraction of the price that you would pay from, uh, from a company or a vendor. It's very simple. From Ricky Light, brown rice flour, a bag will give you 30 jars or more and um, you, 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 and you made it yourself you know what's in it you know how it's done you, you, you don't have to worry you don't have to waste the money I wasted a hundred dollars I told people about that and people wrote comments because I got when I got deleted all those people who were who were, who were asking me questions they they, 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 they they couldn't find me anymore um, so I had people tell me oh Midwest Girl Kids has great reviews they must be working everywhere and all the time you must be doing, they say, I must be doing something wrong that I had shitty syringe, spores in my syringe. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I, there, it was there. Their way was wrong because um, when I made my own substrate, 100% successful. Their substrate, I used their spawn bag, contaminates, too, too, too wet. It was too wet. I used, um, I used their inoculation. I got, what, around here, I got um, their little tiny alcohol lamp. I used first one I bought damn thing only lasts probably about five minutes when when you're inoculating it takes 20 30 minutes sometimes you have to refill it I used their hum humid humidor um, which has a monitor on it to keep the, um, your dried mushrooms it keeps them at a perfect um, temperature didn't work because you had to you had they wanted to a per certain 60 65 percent and if it dropped below that you put wet paper towels in it to bring it up but the wet paper towels started um, um, it started uh, moistening up the, the dry mushrooms and they would, they would hydrate, they start hydrating. And it, was, it just didn't work. I used their drying kit, nothing. I didn't, it didn't work. I, I was, I, I, my way, to, I used to use a cardboard box with a fan on top of it before I got the, the, the dehydrator. Then uh, about the dehydrator um, had heat and I was concerned about that. And I was, did my research, everybody's, oh, it's okay as long as you put it on low. And these are people on forums, Shroomery and Mytopia. My these are forums that many, many, many people, that's what they're there for is to talk about mycology, mushrooms. And uh, they're saying, oh, no, you, it's okay. You could use heat to dry your, your mushrooms. I'm like, no, 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 no. Heat kills alkaloids and affects the potency, drops potency and affects the trip. Um, everybody's like, no, you're a newbie. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm like, listen, you guys do what you want. I don't do it, and I'm not going to tell anybody otherwise to do anything else. So, and it's true. Heat kills and affects potency. That's why the, the trader, I disconnected the heating element. I opened it up, unscrewed the, 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 wire, um, the wire nut, and um, it's all air. And it runs 24 hours a day. I'm, I, I fruit. Every day I'm harvesting. And um, that's how it's supposed to be especially with the, the tub, the, the trays I'm doing. Um, it's way different than the cakes. The cakes, you know, you get little, little, you'll get a bunch of them, but then they'll diminish after you flush, you rehydrate the cake and this and that. And it's less, it's not as potent as the, the, the manure, and it's not as big. You'll, you'll see a big difference, but you gotta get past that point. You gotta get master of the cakes, then start doing this, this substrate. So when I start doing spore prints, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing agar and dropping the spore prints onto an agar, and I can see whether that mycelium is uh, being con it's gonna be contaminated, because whoever's making those those spore prints, if they're not pro following proper sterile procedures, that spore prints can, can be contaminated. You won't know about the contaminant until you inoculate into uh, your substrate, and to prevent that, you have the option of using agar. And agar will tell you before you even inoculate anything and waste the substrate whether that thing's going to be a contaminant because it'll grow right on the little dish. That red, that pink stuff on the and the agar looks like wax. 
it'll 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 start the mycelium will start to grow and it, there'll be some color there and you you know that spore print is is uh, is done you gotta throw it away because it's contaminated um, if you follow the proper sterile procedures you'll they'll fully colonize full white you stick the whole thing onto some grains um, mostly it's grains because you're going to be doing a, um, that you don't do it you don't inoculate um, cakes with um, that type of procedure you only do grains with that type of procedures cakes you can inoculate with a syringe or a, a, a multi-culture um, so that's important all that knowledge that you need it that you build slowly don't overwhelm yourself by trying to jump trying to um, jump in a pool without swimming because you're just gonna you know you're gonna struggle so um, master things every little thing at a, at a time step by step by step if you see my videos I do everything by step by step by step so you don't have to sit there and watch a whole hour segment uh, when you only want to learn one thing I noticed that when I was when I would learn from people on YouTube I would be having to fast forward it and skip because I only wanted to know that one part and um, frustrating so I was like Pfft. I like it. That's why I do it the way I do it. Um, that's why you see everything's broken up into segments. Also, I don't edit. I don't know how to edit. I'm not going to try editing. As I, 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 I'm, I don't need. To, I don't need to do it. That's why, I, if I wanted to, I could learn, but I don't want to. So that's why I just do things step by step. Because if I mess up, I do another video. So when the YouTube deleted me, and I, re and, I and now I did the, my new channel. They won't let me do some some of the videos I had. They they won't even let me add them. They they totally before they even um, fully upload, they cut off at 95%. Say this flagged. We can't. We're not gonna allow it. You know, I don't know how how they know. Um, three of them. So if you see my videos, it says one, two, three, four, five, six. There's some missing because they won't let me add it. And one of them is misting and fanning, which I have to redo the video um, because that's an important process. Misting and fanning is very very important. Without it. You're gonna, it's gonna, you're not gonna have the same um, success. You're not gonna have the same growth as fast. It's gonna take longer. So, reason why you do that. So I'll just I'll 